Namaste everyone. Thank you for joining in the second part of this video where we are exploring the seventh Lord in different houses. In the first part, of course, we covered the seventh Lord in houses one to six. And today we are going to cover the seventh Lord in different houses. Okay, but then before we get into this topic in details, kindly subscribe to the channel if you have not done that already. And uh, Please share it with your friends and family if you find it useful. Okay, so the seventh Lord in the seventh house, right? So this means that the ruler is placed in his own house. And this gives the desire to find a strong and bright partner who is able to take responsibility for in the marriage, okay? And uh, that does not mean that you will not be involved in some kind of active rivalry with your partner. Okay, for example, if the seventh lord gets into a Graha Yuddha with another planet and that seventh lord gets defeated in the Graha Yuddha, in that case, the native will indulge in some kind of active rivalry with the partner. Okay, now when the seventh, if you remember the last video, I said that if the seventh lord goes into the first house, then the partner, then the person himself or herself would look for and find partners to marry. But here the picture is opposite. Okay. It is usually a case where your partner is going to find you. Okay. And that partner, you know, may be, may be married. You may be dating someone who is already had a marriage or who is already married okay and uh, marriage is like a reliable rear for a person having this combination okay the, the partner is going to be an ally a friend and support and as a result you know this uh, such a native is going to be very serious about marriage okay now where will you find your partner you can find your partner at work you can find your partner you know in your business or your partner may, be, may turn up to be your client or even a competitor. Okay. Now the seventh Lord in the eighth house. So this position will indicate that, you know, the, the relationship or the marriage will be built on a financial basis. Okay. And, you know, the, the person or the native may be on the payroll of a partner. Okay. And if this is happening in a water sign or a fire sign, then sexual relations will play a big role in such partnerships or marriages, okay? Now, in addition to this, uh, the seventh lord in the eighth house also indicates the likelihood that your partner is going to be engaged or likely to be engaged in some dangerous, possibly illegal or marginal activities, okay? And uh, if the seventh lord is weak or afflicted, then it could be the death of a partner or the divorce or separation from a partner after marriage. Okay. So now what happens if this, you know, if the seventh Lord is joined by a planet like Ketu, in that case, the person, you know, might desire not to marry at all. You know, that could actually, that could potentially deny marriage. Okay. So because, you know, any indication of celibacy will take away your desire to marry Okay, so, you know, this is a very sensitive position, if I could use the correct word. And uh, if uh, the partner or if the, you know, if the combination is this harmonious, such that the seventh Lord going to the eighth house is afflicted or if the eighth house itself is afflicted, then marriage can become a real headache for such a person. Okay, because, you know, the choice of a partner is always done in favor of that adrenaline rush you have when you see someone of the opposite gender. And uh, if you are under constant stress after the marriage, that can be really, really exhausting and can create a lot of problems for you. Okay. So if you have this position, you must use it very correctly in order to make, in order to get a happy relationship or in order to have a happy marriage. Okay. Where, how will you meet your partner? You can meet your partner when you're going through a difficult life period or even when you are undergoing a momentary threat to your life. Okay, it sounds very, very strange, but you'll meet your partner very suddenly if you have this position. <laughs> what if you have the seventh Lord in the ninth house? 
right? So this is one of the classic indications where you will, you might get married to a foreigner or to a person who belongs to a different caste or a different Varna from you. Okay, Varna. Varna is the Sanskrit word for caste, right? And uh, you might meet your partner through the internet or maybe via a marriage agency. And it can also be an indicator that the spouse travels a lot. The spouse may work in the legal field and acquaintance with the partner can happen over a trip, you know, maybe a business trip or maybe at a resort, okay, in a business meeting as such. Now, the ninth house is the house of dharma, okay? So it is important that your partner and you have some spiritual values, okay? But that does not mean that the marriage is going to be very boring, very routine-based, okay? You know, the, uh, it's, it's, it's something like the opposite, you know? The partner would desire variety and adventure. But spiritual values, having spiritual values will fill your marriage with a lot of meaning, okay? What if you have the seventh house ruler in the tenth house? Now, this can indicate marriage with a person above yourself in social status or in a different social circle. Okay. If the position is very strong, if the seventh lord is strongly placed, okay, then marriage can happen with a very famous and influential or very prestigious person. Okay. And for these people, marriage is often the beginning of a joint business or a joint activity. Okay. It could be a stepping stone in professional growth or, you know, the beginning of a path to become famous. Now, if the ruler is afflicted or bad, badly placed, then, you know, fame will turn into notoriety. Okay. For example, you may look with your partner and then there might be a wide discussion on your relationship by the public, among the public. Or sometimes you can enter into a conflict, you know, with your parental opinion when it comes to choosing your partner. Okay, but whatever it is, for these people, marriage is often the foundation for life. And uh, as a result, the native is always going to choose a partner with all with lots of seriousness. And, uh, you know, this is also one of the placements that indicates a marriage of convenience. Okay, for example, it may you may find a partner who does not really want to get married, but still gets married to you because of your social status or because of your financial status. All right. Then if the seventh house goes, sorry, if the seventh floor goes into the eleventh house, then you know it indicates a court marriage and non-formalized relationship. And it can also mean marriage to a partner who has children from a previous marriage. Okay. So you'll find your partner in your social circles. You'll find your partner among your among the people with whom you do networking. Okay. So you know. You could enter into a marriage that is concluded according to some very strange ritual, okay? Or it can be one of the indications of a fictitious marriage. For example, I'll give you an example how this thing manifests. Say one, I had this client who came to put for a consultation. He had this seventh lord in the 11th house. And he told me that he got married to a girl in a temple. And uh, they both exchanged the, you know, the barmalas or the garlands, which is very common in a Hindu marriage. And then after three to five months of the marriage, the girl simply refused to acknowledge the marriage socially. Okay. So this can happen with this combination. Okay. And if a person has this position, then uh, such a person is usually found guilty of avoiding official relationships. And most often the marriage will happen by accident. Okay, so for these people, marriage has to be fun and interesting. They should have common dreams and plans for life. The partners should have a common goal. Okay, and as a result, acquaintances can occur in entertainment venues, you know, in social circles, in the company of friends, you know, in dating sites and so on. Okay, and the partner's profession may be related to social activities, television and in the IT industry, and the partner is going to be well known and wealthy. Okay, now what if the seventh lord goes to the twelfth house? So this shows that there may be many hidden things in the relationship. Okay. Even the marriage may be very secretive or very fictitious. Okay, now this is a difficult position to have because I've seen people having the seventh lord in the twelfth house undergo some financial loss after the marriage. Okay. 
there was once this uh, girl who, who came for a consultation, she had the seventh Lord in the 12th house and her father took a loan of around 15 lakhs and they blew up everything in two nights. Okay. So, you know, this is a difficult situation to be in. Okay. And uh, dear, as I said, it's a, it's a generally difficult situation and with additional indications of celibacy, you know, if the seventh Lord joins a planet like Ketu or Saturn, it can give the absence of a stable relationship at all. Okay. And uh, often I've seen people with this combination getting into secret relationships or extramarital affairs. And uh, sometimes they may face significant obstacles for entering into an official marriage. Okay. So this is also indicative that you may lose your partner to death or separation after the marriage. All right. So that's it from me in this video. I've tried to, you know, I've tried to cover the seventh floor in houses seven to 12, as promised in the last video. And should you have any doubts, please leave behind your valuable feedback in the comment section. And if you want a consultation regarding your chart, you're almost, you're always welcome to reach out at the number given in the description box. So that's it from me in this video. I'll see you soon in yet another video on the seventh house. Namaste. Om Guru Venamaha.